With the season six PTR now what seems like in the far distant path, myself as well as everybody else at Maxwell, and I assume the majority of your favorite build guide creators are getting to the hard theory crafting. Yes, there will be patch notes. Yes, there will be changes walking into the season. So I basically just subjected my chat watching me stare at this Paragon board and just very slowly go completely insane. Because if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, I've put a lot of time and effort into min-maxing Paragon boards, coming up with like the rule of five, really good ideas of how to enter and leave boards, how to circumvent and get around like inefficient pathways, etc. But in season six, the game is a lot different. Most people, and if I were to just show you the previous version of this, should expect to have a board that looks something like this. Five boards in total, you're going to be activating five total glyphs, picking up four legendary nodes, and then picking up any good nodes worth of rare and magic bonuses. So like armor and resistances are incredibly difficult and important to get, especially trying to get into Torment 4, where you have massive like negative armor and negative resistance penalties. But it's going to participate in a lot more of your overall progression. Once you have enough of your total res picked out, you no longer need nodes like these, whereas before you get like a really good pair of pants that has all resistance on it. Or maybe you pick up one of your first mythic ubers, something like Starless Guys that gives a ton of all res or Tyrials, obviously. What your paragon needs to do and what it needs to look like for your character to hit all those caps is going to look very different person to person. That's not necessarily what I'm here for, but I want to give a little bit of context for why you probably need to spend a lot more time learning about the paragon system now that... We have as many points as we do. Stats on our gear are as high as they are. And what it means, the difference between what most people will do and what min-maxers will do. And I think a really good example will be looking at this current setup right here. This is going to be for my Sever Necromancer. And while I'm going to have a starter version, which is only assuming that you're going to be on Torment 2, so I only have to handle a certain amount of negative resistance and negative armor, building up into Ancestral gear that you can't drop until you're actually in Torment. It'll always have a GA. You'll be able to mass work it up 12 to 12. It'll start to look a little bit different. And then once you are on that mythic gear, something that you're going to have long before you ever finish leveling out your paragon is also going to look a lot different. Right here, we assume that this character has 233 paragon points. Just to give you an idea, getting up to paragon point 200 is going to take anywhere between like five to six times as long as it took to get to level 100 in the past. So for your average character, that might be like a week or two of gameplay. For a blaster, that's the first like two or three days, considering we got getting up to level 100 down to about like two to three hours, depending on your class and your build. But I think that realistically, most people who play throughout the entirety of the season will get up to about 250 Paragon points. And that might be a bit of a stretch, we'll have to see. The issue being that if you only get up to 250 Paragon points, you technically have like another 83 that you could get for those people who play throughout the entirety of the season. And things start to get kind of weird when you add that many Paragon points to a board. Now, things that'll be really important to understand about the current character that you're looking at here is that I already have well over 3000 intelligence and I also have thousands of additive damage. Now, for most people, what you'll end up doing is basically picking up every single rare and magic node, every single thing that says damage or your core stat. Uh, you may ignore ones that are more niche. You may not want to go get ones like damaged injured because those are only worth about 35% of their total value since it only works once a monster is at 35% of its remaining life. But the more that you build out and pick up these little nodes, etc., you're going to start noticing you kind of ran out. Now, this same example, but instead attempting to spend all of my points started to drastically change what my boards looked like because your core stat nodes effectively become free. Now, what do I mean about free? If we were to go through this board, you will notice that I've picked up every single rare and magic node that says additive damage or core stat. I have gone to every single thing that actually works for my build. Like here, shadow damage over time doesn't work because I'm a sever build. I'm not a blight build. I don't care about this node. But I've picked up everything. I've picked up every single maximum life node. I've picked up every additive node, even with ones that say like when I pick up a blood orb, I've picked up every single node that actually matters. Now, I haven't picked up things like damage to injured because again, they're only worth about a third of their current value. And at my current intelligence level and my current additive damage level, I need to get at least five additive damage to outperform getting five intelligence. Now, what do I mean to outperform getting that much intelligence. Well, let's go ahead and look at how much int I have right now, which is 
3,401. At 3,401 intelligence, increasing this by a single intelligence node will increase my damage by 0.16%. That's right, I'm getting 0.16% total damage output from a single node of 5 intelligence. Now that comes along with the fact that my amulet is going to have a percentage increase to intelligence. So in reality, I'm getting five times 1.228% intelligence per node. It comes out to be about 6.18, but this is how we get to this number. I'm currently here at 3,401 and picking up another intelligence node will increase that damage by 0.16. Now, how much additive damage do I have? To save you the long and short, I had about this much critical strike damage. I had a bunch of additive damages that all worked together. And what I ended up with was around 2,601 additive damage. For people who don't know, to determine how much of a multiplier that is, you add one and then you divide it by 100, right? So 2,600 additive damage is 27 times my total damage. Adding on five additive damage, so changing this from 27.01 to 27.06 is representative of a 0.185% damage increase. Now I know I'm losing you, but what you need to look at is that this number for adding on five additive damage is higher than this number for adding on six intelligence. And that's just because my intelligence bucket is hypersaturated and my additive bucket isn't as saturated at that point. Now, obviously, as you add on more additive damage, this number will go down and down. And as you add on more intelligence, this number will go down and down. And basically at this point, five intelligence will always be worth less than five additive damage. And there will be a certain point where five intelligence will be worth less than four additive damage and so on and so forth. But at the point that I'm looking at right now, and again, I can't stress this enough, I have literally picked up every single node that would outperform an intelligence to give me damage. Like down here, I have 12 additive damage to injured. That's currently only worth about a 4.7 for me. So this will now slightly outperform an intelligence node. Now I can't currently path to anything, meaning put points in to get to anywhere that would be worth more than just putting it into an intelligence. What do I really be, mean by that? Well, I could just click this and gain five intelligence. That is 100% efficient, right? One point gets me a damage increase as opposed to trying to get over to this node here. So this node would give me armor, which I don't need, I'm already at cap, and it would give me roughly 35% of the additive damage available to it. But to reach it, I would have to put in points. Now, gaining more dexterity isn't gonna get me crit chance, I'm already at 100% chance to crit. Gaining more willpower will like very slightly increase my essence generation, but I don't have essence cost issues. I'm at 100% essence the entire time. So every dex node, Every willpower node and even every strength node, even though it would grant me armor, is considered dead here. It's not increasing the efficiency of my build. So when comparing this node, which gives me 50 additive damage, I think I'm going to get about a third of that. So that's about 17, 16 ish additive damage, which obviously vastly outperforms five intelligence. I have to spend three points to get there. So now we have this idea of point economy. I have to spend points to outperform intelligence. Intelligence is the golden standard. So for right now, where my numbers are, where my stats are, it is not worth it to build out to this node because the loss of three points would be vastly stronger than just having put in points to intelligence. Okay, great. Now we understand the cost of pathing through the boards and we understand a little bit of the pickle that we're in. Basically, I have 46 points to spend into intelligence. And what does that mean? Every point I put into intelligence is free. It didn't cost me anything because I'm going to pick up intelligence everywhere. I'm going to pick up intelligence here and here. I'm going to pick up intelligence here and here. I'm going to pick it up here. They're 100% efficient. But what that means is the way that I've pathed through my board is also inefficient now. Let's go ahead and look at a really weird example that won't make any sense at first. And then I'll explain to you why you're going to hate the end game of Paragon boards. If you notice, when I swap between my Mystic Respec, so less than 250 Paragon points, this is where I assume the majority of players will get by the end of the season, and my full board, not only did I rotate my exploit board, but I also swapped Flesh Eater and Blood Begets Blood. Why did I do that? Well, as, whereas before you would normally like to follow the rule of five, meaning five points should get you to an important destination, 
intelligence nodes are now free. I'm going to be picking them up anyways, so they don't cost me anything to path along a board if it's an intelligence node. And what that means is that pathing through the boards is now more efficient than it was previously, and I've lost efficiency by not swapping around my boards. So let's go ahead and look at frailty as a great example here. Path two, a node of relevance, this maximum life node. I want to pick up this node. I have two intelligence nodes along the way. Sadly, though, I have a strength node, a dex node, and two willpower nodes. Pathing through here, since the intelligence is free, is costing me four points. Similar to that setup, to be able to path from this node of interest, which is this really valuable high additive damage as well as intelligence, and to leave through this board, I got three intelligence nodes. So again, those are completely free, but it cost me one willpower, two, three willpower nodes. So pathing out of here cost me three points. Pathing out of here cost me four points. Is there anywhere else on the boards that I currently have where I could outperform these costs of pathing? Again, assuming that now that I've picked up everything that's relevant, I just want to pick up as much intelligence as possible. There's no more additive damage for me to get. This board right here, which is super efficient to path to. Why? Because this is the Eliminator Glyph. I want to pick up as much main stat as possible. It builds all the way over to here, so this cost me no points to get to here. Picked up an Intelligence node, which I need to to max out this Glyph, and then only cost me two points. So pathing through this board only came with a cost of two. But right over here, you'll notice that we have a really inefficient stretch of five points, right? Willpower, Dexterity, Intelligence, Intelligence, Willpower. But if all of my Intelligence nodes are free, Leaving the board via this path right here would only cost me three points. What does that mean? Flesh Eater should no longer be my dead end board because I actually want to path out of it. Because of this connection cost me four points, but this connection only cost me three points. By putting this board up here and by putting this board down at the end, I have gained a point of efficiency. I've gained another intelligence node I get to put somewhere else. And that's what I've been doing now for the past hour or two while looking at this and asking these types of questions. Is it better for me to actually pad this way as opposed to something like this, which obviously this isn't a great example, but what is the difference if pathing for longer stretches of nodes would get me a bunch of free intelligence nodes and effectively cost me less? The more points I can put into intelligence, the more damage I'm going to do. So now I have to take this flesh eater board and move it up here, and Frailty should now become my dead-end board. With my exit being right here, since I effectively have to enter the board from somewhere, and I can't outperform that anywhere else. Here you'll see that, so this cost me one, two, three nodes. Building out here, this would cost me four nodes to leave. Uh, building out of here, one, two, three, four nodes to leave as well. I would never build out of this side, and this one's already inefficient. So, let's use the power of editing really quickly. Alrighty, great. I just saved myself a point. Now, it cost me points to do that, but the points that I spent are now in more intelligence nodes than they were before. As such, I've gained efficiency. I now need to go look at every single exit every time that I want to put in a single node and ask the question, do I now have a more valuable exit than I did previously? In fact, I just saw one right here. <laughs> That's actually really funny. Uh, this exit right here has three intelligence nodes plus two intelligence nodes and would only cost me a single either intelligence and wisdom or wisdom and strength. So this node is actually more efficient than even the exit that I just made here. And now I need to go swap them all out again. Please hold. Okay, great. There we go. I actually just spent the same number of points and gained two intelligence nodes all for the price of having to rearrange all my boards yet again. Now, luckily for most people who don't want to sit here and do this themselves, we're going to be doing this for you. Right, we're going to be sitting down doing this type of theory crafting, but I wanted to put this out because it's a realization and a difference in the strategy than we had previously. And it's something that's going to take a very long time to get exactly perfect what you need to do at any given moment to be able to outperform what your build was doing previously or what your board was doing previously. And again, for the vast majority of people, they're not really going to get to this point. They may have to figure out how to efficiently spend like 10 to 30 uh, paragon levels, paragon points, and maybe that just changes one or two boards and where you pad in and out of them. But for the real end game, for the super meticulous end game, if you're looking to have a perfect build, a finished build, this is what we got to look forward to. 
I hope that that helps anybody who's been theorycrafting themselves or trying to figure out like, how do I get the most out of this new system? Basically, the idea is take whatever your core stat is, uh, determine how much of a bonus it would grant you, adding on more of it to your build, figure out how much additive damage you have, determine what it would look like adding that onto your build. And then by the end of all of it, sit there and go point by point and go, is this one more efficient or is this one more efficient? Your core stat is always free because you're going to have to fill up the rest of your board with core stat. I don't think there's any combination of boards that actually has like enough relevant magic and rare nodes. Like over here, I have potion healing and life per second. I'm never going to build over to this. So I'm probably going to end up spending anywhere between like 40 to 60 Paragon nodes just in decor stat. Uh, so yeah, sit down, ask that question, figure it out. Uh, always max out your glyphs at this point because they're probably going to outperform just putting it in decor stat. And there you go. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you're brand new here, subscribe to the channel, leave a like on it as well. If I could have explained it better or if you would like more clarity or you want me to go into any one of these subjects in more depth, also let me know down in the comments. I want to try to get as much as I possibly can for people because this is a very interesting part of the lineage of Diablo 4, the story of Diablo 4, and how the game has evolved. And we're kind of all still just along for the ride here. So I'm learning, you're learning, we can help each other learn. But yeah, thank you very much for watching the video. I truly hope that it helps and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.